Hello everyone. I just did a massive recording on the other document I did, which was to cover successful gun builds. Now I want to cover this document. In order for you to better understand this, I, I need to rewind a little bit to talk about my prior recordings with uh, Call of Duty. I think Call of Duty does have potential, but they're not tapping into that potential. The game still has a lot of problems. The uh, crashing issue I was having in beta is still present in retail. I recently received a copy of Call of Duty from a family member as a gift, but I ultimately had to return it. That's because I had the same crashing issues, and just like the beta, anything I did in terms of changing settings, um, you know, uh, window settings, you know, things like that. Nothing had an effect on it. It got to a point where I went to the live chat with Activision support and talked to them about it. It turns out there was nothing I could do. I, it was a valiant effort, but nothing could have been done. So that means I have to play Call of Duty at the sports center or a land center near me. Very unfortunate. Um, so I hope that they can get that together. Um, I did eventually branch out and talk about how video games can be used as an educational platform while still not being 100% realistic. Obviously, if your game is 100% realistic, there's going to be very few people who will want to play it, plus or minus some exceptions like soccer, uh, Chernobyl, and games like that where, my gosh, that thing was as close to realistic as you could get. But, um, yeah, so this document is basically the same things that I was saying back then, but put into a Google document so that it's easier to find and a little bit easier to kind of like keep up with. I know that some people are visual, uh, memory people like me, so I think that this is an easier approach for those people as well as some other people, but... All right, let's just go ahead and quickly go over this. So, I recognize from the community that suppressors are in a really bad place. As a matter of fact, there's absolutely no point in using them. Part of that reason is because um, you only have a five attachment slots, so you really don't have room to do much. Another reason is if you're playing in uh, competitive league or team-based matches, uh, players are going to know your position anyways. There's no point in running suppressors due to that. What I've done is I'm, I've am i got my ideas together and I've put it into this form in which I'm saying that I want to see tactical suppressor uh, lightweight suppressor and monolithic suppressor have a purpose now. Tactical suppressor will have the uh, ADS reduction halved, so from 1 to 0.5, because it's plus 1 right now, like every other suppressor, um, and it will receive a new positive recoil reduction. The problem with tactical suppressor right now is that it has too many negatives for the positive. You only get uh, sound suppression for the two negatives it provides. So essentially I'm saying let's just throw in recoil reduction. So it acts like a compensator. It won't be as strong as a compensator, but it can act like one. That will make it so it's a decision, and they even point out here. You can get damage range of through monolithic or recoil control tactical. That's what it boils down to. As for the lightweight suppressor, I just want to see the negatives removed. The only positive on it um, is going to be sound suppression. It's just going to be there as a neutral um, suppressor. Then I want to take that a step further by removing the negatives from compensator, muzzle brake, uh, muzzle brake uh, reflex, and three and a half times optics. In real life, they would not lower your aim down sight time. I can do a far better job aiming a firearm with any one of those optics than iron sights. It will take me much longer to adjust to iron sights uh, than any one of those. To be fair, I am older. My eyesight is not what it used to be. 
So for me, it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing with those. So that doesn't make sense to start with. But the main point here is getting compensator and muzzle brakes negatives removed. So that way now it's a choice of either eating negatives to get some recoil reduction plus sound suppression or not worrying about negatives and getting full on recoil control. That's what I've suggested right here. Now that change does branch out into something else that I was thinking that Call of Duty could do and probably most games actually could do this. I don't think that this is going to be specific to um, Call of Duty. But point is, is veterancy bonuses. So essentially at certain levels you will receive a free attachment. It won't count towards uh, that attachment limit. Knowing that it's going to be free, I didn't want to put anything in here that would upset game balance or give players an advantage over others. Knowing that, I put in the Solo Zero Reflex for that request instead of the GI Mini Reflex. The GI Mini Reflex is the best reflex site. If pros are going to be using a reflex site, it's going to be the GI Mini Reflex. It doesn't take up much of the screen and it makes things a lot easier to see. So obviously I'm not going to say let's go ahead and give people a free pro reflex site. That's just not going to happen. Unfortunately for the holographic sites, I'm a bit more limited in that. There's not really any good ones besides the PBX7 and APX5. The other ones are, would be even worse than Soul Zero. In that scenario, I went ahead and was just like, let's just go ahead and suggest PBX7, Hollow, and APX5. That would give players the options to use either a Hollow site or a Reflex site. Now, as I figured out from doing the document, um, a PBX is not available on all weapons as far as I can tell. So that's why I'm putting APX5 in there as well. So that way you can get either or. Uh, Soul Zero seems to be on all. But anyways, when you get further out in levels, then I want to see the Cronin C4E Pro Optic be available. The Cronin C4E is right now the best uh, for three and a half times optics. Not many people are going to be using it, so I don't see this as game breaking, despite it being the best, see, uh, the best three and a half times optic. It's it takes a gun with a fast ADS site to or ADS time to make that work, whereas these are more forgiving, but that requires something else. So I made an exception for the Cronin C4E just because of those reasons. But that's just based on player levels. Now we start getting into actual gun levels. Whenever you level an LMG up, it doesn't have to be. Um, well, actually, I'm suggesting that it's not going to be the category itself. I'm suggesting it's going to be individual to the gun. At an LMG level, you get compensator for free. This is part of why I was suggesting these changes up here, but also just improve gameplay. But whenever a gun reaches level 40, it gets access to compensator if it's an LMG. So let's just say it's the SA-7. Well, once the SA-7 is level 40, you get a compensator for free. For marksman and sniper rifle level 40, I wanted that to be bipod. These uh, two are going to be used more so for crouching than the LMG category. So I want to make sure that that playstyle was complemented by some, an attachment that actually would help with that. For SMG and pistols, lightweight suppressor. Once it becomes neutral, then essentially it's just a free sound suppression, which is what you want and close quarters for um, for that stuff. For shotguns, a choke. Straightforward. Bullpup and P90. Now, you will notice that I didn't request an AR level up here, and it's because most of the ARs are able to achieve their builds without really much difficulty. The ones that truly struggle in the AR and SMG categories are the bullpups. Their reload times are going to be significantly higher than the non bullpups uh, based weapons. I did at one point think about doing bullpup and PDW, which would include uh, P90 and MP7, but then I realized that would be too much. 
The MP7 is already much stronger than the P90 in its current balance state. So um, I think that this would just help it overall get better. There's a, an attachment for this that I suggested down towards the bottom. We'll cover that soon. But either way, I want Bullpup and P90 to be sleight of hand. Essentially what this veterancy bonus is doing is it's making it so that the guns that do require a lot of attachments to be good on a numbers level can get that and still be competitive with the other guns once you reach that level. I'm saying screw trying to balance the gun on its base numbers. Make it so that the higher level players with the guns are the ones that are better with it. That's what this breaks down to for veterancy bonuses. Moving on to guns. So a lot of these guns are in here for a reason. Um, there's one or two that's in there just for fun. Uh, that would be the A12 and SR25. Oh, and DSR1. You can honestly go without these. As long as you can add the uh, MSBS, Beretta, M27, FN Mini Me, and the CZ Scorpion, then I think the game would be better for it. I'll just quickly go over why I think that. There is not a lot of 7.62 automatic rifles in the game, and for that matter, ones that are high RPM. I think that an MSSBS C model would fit that perfectly. A high rate of fire 7.62 AR um, that would have more mobility than the other ones through its unique attachment. Of course, this can always change, but for now, you get the, the general idea of what I'm after. Um, Beretta MX4 Storm, that's in there because um, I'm looking for more long-range SMGs. I really hate seeing just the Bison and Uzi being up there. I want to be able to provide more options for players. I think that this one can fill a uh, an interesting role while still maintaining realism. You actually can load either the magazines that come with the MX4 or you can load pistol magazines into it. It's a it's a quirk of the weapon, but it's an interesting one. So I was like, screw it, let's bring that into the game. Unique perk, basically scavenger, well, half of it. Um, as I pointed out, AO12 is for fun. M27 IAR. Right now, the S87 is really the only AR-like LMG in the game. I would like to see more of them. There is the Holger True, but unfortunately it's just not good. They really need to fix its numbers. Even if they did, I want to see a non-battle pass LMG put into the game uh, to essentially give you another option later in the levels, because the SA-7 is, I think, like what, level 25 or something like that? So I want to see this be like level, I don't know, 60 maybe. So, um, but yeah, um, just basically bring in another air-like LMG to kind of fill that gap. I think this one could be faster on ADS time um, than the SA-7 while still maintaining a very good time to kill RPM and other things. So I think that would fill a gap pretty well. FN Mini Mini Para is in here. Um, for a similar reason. Right now the PKM and M91 don't really see a lot of action due to the fact that they have atrocious uh, ADS times and the recoil is just not fun. The Para was designed to introduce a standard LMG that could be mobile, still have good ADS times, and still dish it out in range. So that's why that's there. SR25 and DSR1 are just for fun, really. Although it would be nice to have, um, because I think the SR25 can fill another gap. While the EBR14 is good at range, it's just not as good as the Dragunov. So I was thinking that the EBR14 could be like shorter range than the SR25, and then the SR25 could be longer range than that. 
the SR25 would still be shorter, much shorter than uh, the Dragunov with its 660 millimeter barrel. But yeah, so it's just basically filling in the gap between the EBR-14 and Dragunov. The OSR-1 is just for those jump shot snipers, really. I mean, just kind of like, why not? Let's put a mobility sniper in there. Finally, the pistol suggestions. So I recognize that there is no automatic pistols in the game. So the uh, Scorpion Evo could fill that role. But that could be too powerful if you introduce an automatic pistol into the game. At that point, it becomes a reasoning uh, problem, I guess you can say. If you introduce an automatic pistol into the game, then it becomes why would you use an SMG at that point type of thing. So that could be game-breaking. That's why I put or FN57. Um, I put some reasons in here for which one's added, but seeing as we mentioned the P90 earlier, um, this is to complement that. I wanted to see the SS-190 duty attachment be put into the game. Uh, it's a specific 5.7 round that's very good at penetrating armor. Um, in real life, it can penetrate, I think they said it was twen at 25 meters, it could penetrate military grade body armor. Due to the very destructive nature of this particular bullet, FN Herschel only sells this to law enforcement and military. That's how dangerous that bullet is. It was designed for one purpose and one purpose only, destroying armor. So I think that the FN57 would be a better pistol to add than the CZ Scorpion, because then you could buff the P90 indirectly by introducing the SS190 to this and that. Um, however, I do recognize that if people don't like that idea or there's just some other factor I'm missing, then you can add the CZ Scorpion. So there you have it. Um, there's my reasonings for each gun and what role they could fill. This falls back into what I was saying my prior recordings in that a video game can be used for educational purposes. Look at how well I was able to integrate these into the game while still maintaining realism to a certain degree. The Braddock MX4 Storm can have an effective range up to 200 yards. So just like the P9, uh, P90 and MP5, oh, and the Uzi, they all have a real life effective range of 200 um, yards. For the Beretta, it has to be on 9mm to do that. Um, if it's on 45 ACP, then obviously it's not going to be able to reach that far. As for the other weapons, um, well, the FB FBM SBS is actually an interesting rifle. It's a very high rate of fire for a big round, um, and it seems to be of good quality. So I think the MSBS should be in there. Uh, M27, my reasoning for that um, is because it basically is an AR, just like the S87. So I was able to fit that in very easily, and in real life it does have polymer drum magazines. So look at that, I was able to do two things in just one gun suggestion. FN Mini Me Para is a very tiny version of the M249 essentially, yet it's still capable of extreme ranges despite being small. So this would fit in perfectly. And everything else is pretty straightforward, but yeah, see look how easy that was. I was able to maintain some level of realism while still thinking about the game and what its needs are. I think that all games should be able to learn from this and do better. In Call of Duty's case, I think it's fair to say that they just don't have their heads on straight. After so many Call of Duty titles, they should know by now players treat this as a run-and-gun game. It's a waste of your time to be putting in things like the PKM or the M91 complete waste. If you really wanted an LMG category, here's what I would do. I would have done FN Mini Para as your only um, mounted 
weapon. That one would have up to 200 rounds of magazines, uh, box magazine. Um, I would have the SA-7, because there's really not that many air-like um, LMGs out there. Well, weapon support, whatever you want to call it. So unfortunately, SA-7 is just going to have to be put in there. It can be used as like a beginner rifle, and then later on you can get to the better stuff like the M27 IAR. So obviously M27 IAR would be there. I would put in the RPK-16. That's the most modern um, weapon support. It's based off the AK-12 platform. It can have up to 96 rounds in a drum magazine, which is going to be a lot more than the M27 or S87. The M27 can only have 60 rounds in its drum magazine, so 96 is a pretty big number. But that's it. That's all I would ever do for an LMG category because that's all that I could realistically see as being used for run and gun. Outside of that, I really don't think that there is going to be any weapons that you could count as such. For now, anyways. There's going to be new weapons for the military down the road, but for right now, that's going to be your most common that I think could be implemented for that particular reason. Some of the other weapons like... Negev or the other ones that may be out there. The problem is, is that they are big and heavy. Um, the Mini Me Para, while it is a heavy gun, it's very t compact. I think if I remember right, the Para's weight is like 16, 17 pounds, somewhere around there. So obviously this is going to be a lot heavier than any one of these, but if you notice its overall size, it's very, very tiny for an LMG. But, um, yeah, so you can just kind of see that. But, yeah, you can see that I've said some similar things down here in the notes. Um, but real quickly, I want to get into uh, this last section that I just want to talk about. Because, again, this is not specific to Call of Duty. Anything that you saw up there could be done by really any game. This can be done as well. I recognize that in order to add the newer guns, older guns must be balanced. However, I, despite knowing the numbers, I'm not entirely sure as to what would be the best approach for the numbers. I decided to just simply state my thoughts as to what it should feel like and what it should reward you for. So for ARs, it's going to be a balance uh, between mobility, range, and time to kill. Balanced weapons are not good at one thing, so players are rewarded for being able to adapt to a situation. That's what an AR should feel like. SMGs, high mobility and time to kill. Short range. Pretty straightforward. They're rewarded for an aggressive playstyle. AR like LMGs and marksman rifles. Some mobility, good range, and damage. So its primary focus should be more on the range and damage than the uh, mobility. Players are rewarded for aggression and proper position, which is the exact same thing in real life. If you notice any of the military units using um, marksman rifles, or as they're called in the military, designated marksman rifles, uh, they are usually in squads. They are there to provide cover support, well, covering fire or support, uh, against enemy snipers that would want to kill their unit, or pick off machine guns that are a problem for their unit's advance. That's some of their primary uses. So, obviously, you're going to be rewarded for being slightly aggressive, getting up there with your fellow teammates, and then getting into a position where you can cover them. So, it's a balance between aggression and proper positioning. You have to be able to adapt between those two. It's not like these, which is specific to one or another. LMGs and snipers is straightforward. Uh, long range and high damage. They should not have a focus on mobility. They are rewarded for proper positioning. You realize that your mobility is going to be low, so you have to account for that low mobility and respond to a situation accordingly. But there you have it. That is my entire document in a nutshell. To recap, Call of Duty is not the only one that I would do uh, something like this for. I think all games can learn from this, and they should do it. It's more than 
realism or at least keeping close to realism it's also recognizing that you need to keep a good balance in games and think about your players um, I pointed out with the veterancy thing that people there are people with eyesight issues and optics and if they don't have eye issues optics still makes gameplay easier on players so you should give at least something to help with that the fact that you are well in this case uh, I should say and Call of Duty is forcing a handicap here is essentially what it is people like me uh, who have to wear glasses because of eye issues uh, we need optics at least from the players I've talked to who have similar issues to mine when you're forcing five attachment limit and deciding between optic or that it really is a handicap because you're saying well you're not going to be able to get the full effect of your build because you need this one thing to help but yeah that's the most I have on this uh, thanks if you listened.